The basic basics of a sprite in 5 minutes. As soon as you open a sprite, you'll see the canvas in the middle, color box or color palette on the left, and the preview window at the bottom right corner, and lastly the toolbar on the right. Right below the color box, you will see two colors, the primary and the secondary. Primary is your left mouse button, and secondary is your right mouse button. To import a new color palette or save the current one, click the three lines on top of the color box. Now the two navigation basics to move the screen around, click and drag using the middle mouse button, and to zoom, use the scroll wheel. Now let's talk about the most important tools. Our first tool is called the selection tool. It's activated using M and it allows you to select any part of the drawing. You can scale or rotate anything by hovering with your mouse on any of the corners and you'll see small rotation or scaling arrows start to appear. The selection tool also has another variation called the lasso tool, which gives you more accurate selection. There's also the very useful magic wand that selects an area of the same color. So if you have a multicolored shape like this, you can easily select the yellow parts alone by holding shift and clicking each of them. Pencil tool is activated with B and this is the tool you're most likely going to be using the most. You can control the size from here or by simply holding control and scrolling with the mouse. There is also something cool about the pencil tool. If you click somewhere, then you move a little bit and shift click somewhere else, it'll connect a line between the two dots. You can keep drawing random lines just clicking and then shift clicking. Eraser tool can be activated by pressing E and you can control its size just like we said for the pencil tool from the top left corner over here or you can simply hold control and scroll using your mouse. The ink dropper tool is activated by pressing I or holding Alt while clicking. Let's say I'm drawing something and I want to reuse another color that's already in the image. Instead of going back to the color palette, I can just Alt and left click or Alt right click for the secondary color. Bucket tool is activated by pressing G and it will fill any enclosed area. It will help you color things faster. Line tool can be activated by pressing L, but I think most people just use the pencil tool and shift click to connect the points, just like I showed you previously. Rectangle or square tool is activated by pressing U, as in rectangle. <laughs> if you press U again, you'll switch between filled and empty rectangle. Same goes for circle or ellipse tool, it's activated by pressing shift U, and if you press shift U again, you'll switch between filled and empty ellipse or circle. Blur tool is activated by pressing R, and it's useful if you want to add some blur effect around the lines, just like this. To scale the canvas only, click sprite, canvas size, and you can control the size from these options. But if you want to scale the whole sprite or drawing, including the canvas, click Sprite and then Sprite Size. To rotate anything, click the Edit menu, then choose Rotate. To flip anything horizontally or vertically, use Shift-H or Shift-V. To insert a text, press T and the golden tab to replace a color in the entire image. First, highlight the color with the Ink Dropper tool or using Alt-Left-Click. Then press Shift-R, make sure the tolerance is zero. Then select the color you want to replace and as you can see it's replacing all the purple squares with yellow. Now let's talk a bit about basic animations. You can press tab to show or hide the timeline. As you can see now I have just one layer and one frame. Now let's make a very simple animation. I'll create a new layer for the background by pressing shift N. Now let's move it down by hovering on the edge until you see these four small arrows. Now double click and call it background. And now select the bucket tool by pressing G. And after I color it, I will lock it to make sure I don't draw anything on the same layer. I'll lock the layer using this small lock icon next to the layer name. Now go back to the first layer by using up arrow and add another frame by pressing Alt N. You can move between frames using the left and right arrow keys. Now I'll go back to the first frame by pressing the left arrow and then I'll switch to pencil tool by pressing B. And then I'll make the brush size a bit bigger by holding control and scrolling with the mouse wheel. Now let's draw something random. I will select it using the selection tool by pressing M, highlight, copy, control C, then I'll press escape to deselect, then I'll go to the next frame using the right arrow, and then paste and move it a little bit to the right, and now I can play the animation using enter. You can create more complex animations by repeating the process and adding more frames. These were all the basic basics that you will need to get started with A-Sprite. As soon as you master them, you can start looking for more advanced videos. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and check out my other quick and short tutorials, and I'll see you in the next one.